Hi there, welcome back to the DevO. I am Roman and this is the eighth episode of our F Sharp introductory series. As you can see, things have changed a bit. I got a new mic stand, I got a new background and I've changed the lights a bit. So I hope the sound is much better now than in the last episodes and I hope the whole quality of the, of the video is going to improve quite a lot. So as I told you, I'm in the learning process, so I hope you like this. In the last episode, we talked about recursive functions and about discriminated union cases that are wrapping specific values. And with these two new features, we are able or we enabled Clara to enter all kinds of possibility or possible combinations of her flavors into her sales list. Clara makes good money out of her ice cream truck, but as every good entrepreneur, she tries to improve her business. So she tries to listen to what the customers are telling her. And a lot of customers actually telling her that the size of her scoops is not quite right. So a lot of children want to have bigger size scoops and want a, a lot of adults that need to watch their line or their figure uh, want to have maybe a bit smaller size. And therefore, Clara wants to introduce different sizes for her scoops. And in order to be able to model this, we need a new data structure we haven't talked about yet, which is records. So let's dive just right into it and los geht's. All right, we want to introduce different sizes for our scoops. So we want to somehow be able to know which size the scoop Clara was selling had. So let's do this. For this, first of all, we need a way to talk about sizes. And because Clara wants to have just three different sizes, small, medium and large, we again have a finite number of cases. And as I told you, if we have a finite number of cases that we can enumerate, there is one data type which fits perfectly into this. And this is discriminated unions. So let's do this. Here we have type size, we create type size with the cases small, medium and large. Nice. And now we need a way to somehow keep track of the size of the ice that we were selling. And, and this is where the records come into play. So what are records? Records aggregate different kinds of values into one data structure. And they enable us to have properties with a specific name. So let's just build one to see what a record actually is. So we want to know which kind of ice we have sold. So we can introduce a new type and call it ice sold. And this type needs two properties. The first one is the actual flavor that we have sold. And the type of this property is flavor. And the other one is the size of the ice that we have actually sold. So we call it size and the type is also size. Let's evaluate this. So we have defined a new type size down here with with the case of small medium and large and we have defined a new type which is called ice sold and this type is a record a record in this case with two properties the first one is flavor and the second one is size so as you can see here we need to use curly braces to define records. So records is one of the two occurrences in F sharp where we actually need curly braces. In order to create an instance of this type, we can just use the curly braces again and we can just say we use a flavor and for the flavor we take strawberry. Oh, and we need an equal sign here, not a colon. Strawberry and for the size we say large. Okay, so again here we, we have given no type annotation, the compiler knows that this record instance here is of type I sold because of the name of the properties and the type of the properties. So in this case we have a new I sold with the flavor strawberry and the size large. 
But this syntax here, this one here, is not very usable when we want to use it in types or we want uh, in pipes, sorry, or when we want to create a lot of instances of this type. So it's much nicer if we would just create a function to construct these records. So let's do this. We can say uh, let ice sold equals for a specific flavor, for example. So we say the flavor and this equals the flavor that we were entering and the size, which by default might be just medium. Okay, let's evaluate this function. And then we see that the I sold is a function that takes a flavor as the one parameter. So just call it with ice sold vanilla, for example, and evaluate this. And we see that this function returns a new instance of this type I sold with the flavor vanilla and the size medium. Now that we have actually created our records, we might want to, to be able to, to update them. So in order to be able to do this, we need to identify the value. So let's just call it ice, or just call it vanilla here. And now we could just update the vanilla value. And we, do, we are doing this by using again the curly braces and we say that we have the vanilla and we want to update it. So we want to say we, we want to take the vanilla with the property size equals large. Now we can evaluate both of those. And we see down here that we now have, a, have an ice salt with the flavor vanilla and the size large. But you might ask yourself what happened to the vanilla value here? And as I told you a couple of times now, in F sharp, everything is immutable and records are no exception from this rule. So with, with this update, we actually created a new record. We didn't update the vanilla value. So if you just want to um, use this vanilla again here and evaluate this, we see that this vanilla still is vanilla with the size medium. And the, the one that we updated is with the size large. So we have updated this record. But again, this syntax is not very pipeline friendly or not very friendly to use with other functions. So we need an actual function to update a, an I sold. So let's do this. Let's call the function let update uh, size, for example. And we say we give it the eyes sold and we give it a new size. And in this case, we can then just say take the eyes sold with the size equals the given size. And now we can call this function and say, for example, we take the vanilla, we say update the size of the vanilla with small. And when we run this, we see that we get a new record with the flavor vanilla and the size small. Okay, so now we want to create a new instance of I sold and we want to change the size immediately afterwards because as we see here, the size defaults to medium when we use this I sold constructor function for our I sold. So let's do this. I sold, for example, strawberry. And now I want to feed this into my update size function. And we see here it's the first parameter. And because expressions are evaluated from the inside to the outside, we actually need to put this in braces update size and change the size to large. Okay, let's run this. And we see here that we get a strawberry ice cream with the size large. But again, I think this is not very readable. 
So the reason for this is, in this case, that we need to use those braces. And it, we can't really read this out loud like a sentence and we, we don't really understand immediately what is going on in here. So in order to fix this, we need to switch. Oh, so we wanted to use pipes. And in order to be able to do this, we need to switch the parameters of this function here. So we can create a new function, for example. And what I like about records is that when we use helper functions for records, for example, in those pipelines, it's really nice that we are able to build a domain-specific language just for this case that you can read really easily. And in this case, I don't want to use a name like update size because I want to, to have something much more declarative. For example, in this case, we could say let with size. And now we need the size to be the first parameter and the ice sold to be the second parameter. And then we can just use this here and say I sold, as we've done it up there, equals size. And the really nice thing that we can now do is, for example, that we can say ice sold strawberry with size large. And I think that this is much more readable. We can also well, we can also put this into just one line if you want to. And I hope you, you are on my side when I say that this line down here is much more readable than that line because here we can just read I sold strawberry with size large. So if we want to evaluate all this here, we see that the last line here gives us the, the exact same result that we have an I sold with the flavor strawberry and the size large. Okay, and this I sold function is a function that also takes just one parameter. So we could just pipe the strawberry into our I sold function, um, rename this maybe just to sold. And we have something that resembles a nice sentence actually. And we can say strawberry sold with size large. So what we can do now is that we actually can improve our sales list down here so that we, we keep track of the size of the scoop that were sold by Clara. So for example, here we could now say sold, we have a special advertising sold with the size large. And down here, we see that we get compiler errors now, of course, because the, the upper one here is now an I sold because um, just to recapitulate, the sold function creates an ice sold, takes a flavor and creates an ice sold. And we just update the size of this ice sold. So the first one is an ice sold and the rest are just flavor. And this is what the, the error here is actually telling us. So I just copy and paste this list from somewhere else and updated it with some sizes. All right, now that we have updated our sales list, we have one more error down here. It's the price for function. And when we have a look at the price for function again, it says that the price for function takes a flavor as its first parameter. And just to recapitulate, we take the sales list and with the list map function, we feed every entry of the sales list into our price for function. But every entry of the sales list is not a flavor anymore. It's an ice sold. So we need a new function that can actually work with the ice sold. So let's build this. Uh, I call it let total result. And this one gets an ice sold. And it returns for now the ice sold. And what we're going to do now is we want to, to access one properties of a record. So let's have a look at the record again. This is how the record is defined. And if we want to access one of the, the properties, for example, flavor, we need to actually use a dot syntax to be able to do this. So we could say I sold dot flavor and we are going to 
feed this into the price for function. And now we can use the total result function and everything works as before. But something is missing, of course, because we introduced sizes for our sold ice creams, but we do, do not make any use of those sizes. So let's build a function that gives me a multiplier for my flavor that depend on the size of the ice sold. So let's use this here and say multiplier for size. And because the size, we have a look up here again, is a discriminated union, we can use pattern matching again, very simple pattern matching, and say we match the size with small. And in the case that we have a small ice cream, our multiplier might be 0 0.7. And in the case of a medium ice cream, which were the normal ice creams as before, so we need an, a multiplier of 1.0, so we don't change the actual value. And in the case of a large ice cream, we use 1.3 as a multiplier. Now that we have done this, we can use this function and say, okay, we have the price for, for the flavor times, we need to access the, the size now of the ice salt. So we have here ice salt and now we get IntelliSense because the compiler knows that we're talking about an ice salt and we pipe this into the multiplier for function. Now that we have done this, let's just recapitulate what we have done. We have a new function total result that gets one instance of this new defined type, which was a record. And this record has two properties, a flavor and a size. Now we use the flavor to calculate the price with our old and not changed price for function and we multiply this with the size multiplier. So we take the size out of the record and we pipe this into our multiplier for function. And for each size, we get a different multiplier and therefore a different price. And now we can evaluate this stuff here and we see that we get a different result. I can evaluate this one again here without the, the size multiplier just evaluate this to get the old result. Here we get 7.2 euro and when we change this and we use the multipliers we get a different result. I won't um, calculate this all in front of you now but trust me it's all right hopefully. <laughs> so we use now the size to get a different total result for our sales. All right, very cool. So what have we done? We have introduced a new data structure, records. And with this data structure, we help Clara to introduce different sizes for her ice creams or scoops. And now that we are able to do this, Clara uh, realizes that now she can do one more thing that she always wants to do. She knows that people really don't like Mondays and she wants to make the world a better place. No, so from now on, she declares Monday as strawberry day. And every person that buys a strawberry uh, ice cream on Monday will get 50% off. We are going to implement this new feature in the ninth episode of our F Sharp introductory series. In order to be able to do this, we know almost everything we need to know um, to do this but there's one more thing missing which is currying. If you have any comments or any questions please feel free to contact me. I am Roman and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye bye.